welcome to the Sequence channel, where we go into the Hooniverse of all things Doctor Who. In this type of video, I am going to analyse the episode Rose, pointing out what I love and don't love so much in the story, including plot holes, fun facts and production mistakes. It's an iconic first episode of the first revived series, with the first appearance of Rose and the Ninth Doctor. It's hard to give it a low score. It's got a decent plot and a good amount of funny and exciting moments. I'll give it an 8 out of 10, so we're going to start off with 80 sequins. This episode opens with a mix of both old and new elements to the theme music and titles, bringing both old and new audiences into the action. And to be honest, I couldn't really see a suitable point to cut to the titles in this episode. It also held a record of 10.81 million views for 13 years, until the woman who fell to earth in 2018, but let's pretend series 11 was just a fan made series that was never really canon. So well, hey, this episode still holds the record baby. It was however illegally leaked in its entirety on the internet weeks before its actual air date. Which brings me to today's sponsor, nor... never mind. Episode starts off with Earth in space and zooms into the first scene cliché. This is pretty deceiving considering that more than half of the filming locations are actually set in Cardiff and not in London. And trying to locate this, zooming in on Google Maps, has just wasted about 30 minutes of my freaking time. Young adult wakes up at half seven to go to work cliché. And I don't know about you, but when my alarm goes off and I slam my hand down on the alarm clock, I press every button except the snooze, so I'm going to take a sequin off for unrealism. Hi. Oh, if it wasn't for this guy, then oh my god, the series would be very different. Give him a promotion. We need a turn left style episode for this. 100,000 likes and I'll do a theory video on it. Wilson, I've got the lottery money! What? Now this is something I never noticed until writing the script for this video. Anyone remember what happened in school reunion when the teacher won the lottery out of the blue? And has this company won the lottery or been lottery funded? Is it Wilson's winnings? Why would the writers specifically write that Rose would go back to give Wilson lottery money above all things? Hmm. Well my theory is that the Autons had put this all into place to infiltrate the basement autons we see in a minute. Maybe one day I'll try and elaborate more on this theory, but this possible tangent is pretty cool. Hello Wilson, it's Rose! Roll credits! Say what about copying what popular YouTube channel? Cinema what? It's my own idea, what are you talking about? Watch out, Rose. There's a cameraman behind you. Am I so far? I'm on the main out there. Graham freaking Norton. Derek, is this you? So the bad guys only move slow and use minimal weaponry when convenient for the plot cliche. They could have very easily slipped off the hands and shot Rose on the spot. So the purpose is to just what? Scare her? Am I so far? I'm on the main out there. Oh, people who walk backwards annoy me so much, whether they do it in real life or in entertaining TV shows and movies, and it is totally impractical. Where am I here? It's my least favourite Graham again. Run. Iconic first line is iconic. And just like that. Okay, so they're not running, but in a minute we'll see them catching up to Nina Rose who are running. I could also take a sequin off for how slow they are running, but on the basis of what I mentioned previously, are they currently much of a threat anyway? We see the doctor here pressing for floor 6, and somehow we leave the elevator and without using stairs of any kind, Rose at least, clearly finds herself on the ground floor through what seems to be a fire exit. Where did the sleeve on the arm go? And did I hear any ripping sound? And how is the end of the plastic arm that was connected to your autumn body completely smooth? This doesn't make any sense, even in the universe of animated plastic mannequins. Also, convenient autumn arm for the plot is convenient. Who are they then? Students? Is this a student thing or what? Jesus Christ! 
judging by the fear you have been clearly showing for the last minute or so running away from the students, if you really thought that's what they were, then why would you... Oh, never mind. To get that many people dressed up and being silly, they got to be students. That makes sense. Well... Hmm. <laughs> the Ninth Doctor would make a great co-writer of sequins. They're made of plastic. Living plastic creatures. The show brings back a previously appearing alien race, the Autons, last seen in 1971, further reinforcing my point of the episode being a good mix of both new and old for all types of viewers. But unless you're already familiar with the classic series Autons, there's no mention of the actual name of the living plastic in the episode, and that's something I don't really like, so I'm taking off the sequin. Don't tell them what about this, because if you do, you'll get them killed. I highly doubt that. Unless you take a souvenir of theirs to a party or something, or the FBI are controlling them. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life! This kind of humour is what I loved about the Knife Doctor. <laughs> Rose goes back into Henrik's to swap the right mannequin arm for the left one, apparently. Or the production team somehow messed this up. Okay, so this might be 2005, but that fire looks fake as I'm not going to do a full breakdown on the 50 second trailer for the first series, as it obviously breaks the fourth wall, but the possibility of the corridors that the Doctor is running down being within Henrik's while blowing up is pretty awesome, and Eccleston's acting in the trailer in general, and throwing in another sequin. The whole of central London has been closed. Whichever BBC journalist spelt Henrik's with a C should be fired. She's lucky to be alive! Or lucky to have been kept in the store past closing time in order for the plot to happen. I've been phoning your mobile, you could have been dead! Worried family member or friend fails to contact endangered individual on the phone cliche. Debbie on the end. She knows a man on the mirror, 500 quid for an interview. Seriously, woman, I think she should have at least one evening to process what just happened to her. And getting a new job is probably the last thing on her mind. Not even considering the autons and the doctor and shit like that. You even say yourself only the next day that she has had genuine shock and trauma. Come on then, I'm fine really. Go. Get rid of that. Come to think of it, why did Rose not just throw away the plastic arm on the way home to begin with? And it's back to a right arm again. I can't blame the BBC journalists for not updating the timestamp in this scene. There's no point in getting up, sweetheart. I've got no job to go to. Because the first thing you think to do after your job explodes into a fireball is to turn your alarm off. Also, surely you want her to get up and look for a job. Women are more confusing than I thought. Have uh, you thought about it? A sonic screwdriver, assuming is what the doctor uses to unscrew the cat flap, is extra quiet in this scene. And what the f***? Why is the doctor unscrewing the cat flap in the first place? The f***? The Doctor doesn't put his entire head through the cat flap in this scene, which is what was supposed to happen had they made the right measurements to compensate for 900 years worth of headness. That's got the wrong signal. You're not plastic, are you? No. Bonehead. Bye then. Why is the Doctor ignoring what can't be merely a coincidence? At least ask to have a look around the flat. Anything could happen. No. You gotta love socially awkward, Doctor. It said on the news they found a body. So that'll be Wilson then, I assume? Okay, but the BBC said there were no fatalities on the TV. It's fake news. Oh, it could have been worse. Look at no. the ears. A nice little scene to make you think that he has recently regenerated. Either that or Rose was never involved in any of the photos or drawings in Clive's possession, but I don't buy that. When actually, he, do he just doesn't seem to visit many planets with mirrors or even have one in the TARDIS console room? Nah, I don't buy it either. Seek and remove. Rose allegedly drops a carton of milk, swaps it with a teaspoon and picks it back up in the same hand in mere seconds. For a good reason, of course. This has to be the quietest boiling kettle I've ever heard. The number of times I'll have to put my music on twice the volume every time I do the dishes. Is it? I can buy the whole living plastic thing, but how the hell does it manage to fly around, and especially in this scene, hover like some kind of drone? And how does it have such a sense of spatial awareness of its surroundings? It's not like it has eyes. Jackie's hairdryer doesn't interfere with the sonic screwdriver in this scene, supposedly being one of the hairdryers that don't, referencing the quote in the series 4 episode Forest of the Dead. It would be kind of cool if it was though, just imagine. 
Also, convenient loud hairdryer during an alien incursion in the other room is convenient. All right, then. I'll go to police. I'll tell everyone. You said if I did that, I'd get people killed. So, your choice. Lol, if this technique has ever worked. Like, ever. Last night in the shop, I was there. You blundered in. Almost ruined the whole thing. This morning, I was tracking it down. It was tracking me down. The only reason it fixed on you is because you've met me. So both the arm and the doctor doesn't bother trying to track each other down until it's convenient for the plot for them to do so. It's like when you're a kid. The first time they tell you that the world's turning and you just can't quite believe it because everything looks like it's standing still. I can feel it. Oh, this gives me chills every time. With only 493 results for three very common search queries, searchwise.net is probably not a wise search engine after all. Roll credit. Oh, wait. I said that earlier, didn't I? But I do like the very occasional but effective use of the show's name in the series, so I'm going to add a sequin. He's safe. He's got a wife and kids. Yeah, who told you that? He did. That's exactly what an internet lunatic murderer would say. I appreciate Mickey's cause for concern, but would Clive really be collecting all of this information just to kidnap a very small target audience of people? I can see why Rose practically dumps this guy now. I'm just kidding. As I'll talk about later, Mickey is not the bad half of the relationship. Um, hello, I've come to see Clive. We've been emailing. He's just a kid, but what kind of asshole would say this right to someone's face? And what a way to respect your father. Shame on you, man. Hey, you read a website about the doctor. She's a sheep. Why is this so surprising? You're just as bad as the kid. And to be honest, I wouldn't put it past you that you've kicked Clive out and he's now living in his shed. <laughs> Mickey's hands switch. <laughs> Because burps are funny, and autumn rubbish bins have a sense of humour. 